need a haircut. The PC gaming market is a tough one to get into right now, let's be real. Graphics card and power supply prices are inflated thanks to excessive mining, and system RAM and storage drives are nearly double what they used to be thanks to Micron, Samsung, and others shorting current supply in favor of R&D. <sighs> Look, if I could surmise this entire economy into a single picture, it would be this one right here. Are you freaking kidding me? A miner's buying these up in massive quantities because, I mean, what's a miner got to do with CPU horsepower, right? They've done this so much, prices of even otherwise useless CPUs have inflated. Well, not useless, it's a seller on. But not to worry, I've got all the pro tips you beginners out there need when first getting into the PC gaming industry. How to do so without breaking the bank and how to do so without compromising too much on the performance that I know you so preciously desire. Now a few of these tips might hurt just a bit, not gonna lie, and a few of you might not agree with all of my choices here, but if I was a baller on a budget jumping into the PC industry for the first time, these are the things that I would, would do, I would hope someone would recommend to me in such a hostile market. The first thing I recommend new PC gamers do should they decide to build, which I recommend, is opt for only 8GB of system RAM. This is temporary of course and only suggested for pure gamers, but it'll easily shave off 60 to 80 bucks. And look, I've run these tests countless times in fact, very recently, not much has changed since this video right here. So 8 gigabytes is still plenty for gamers. I don't recommend that for content creators and whatnot, but this is just a video addressing those who want to get into PC gaming for the first time. So with prices being as hostile as they are currently, I recommend 8 gigabytes for now. Once prices do come back down, maybe upgrade with another 8 gig pack later on. Just a few years ago, you could buy 16 gigs of RAM for the price of 8 today. Just a bit outrageous if you ask me. The next pro tip involves a question I get asked quite a bit. Greg, what should I upgrade first, my CPU or my GPU? And I'll confess, I usually say the graphics card. Regardless of what CPU, motherboard, RAM you got in there, unless it's something from 1999, in which case, you just completely rebuild your system. Uh, but if it's, you know, relatively recent, I'd say within the last five, five or so years, if you're on FX or maybe Ivy Bridge, that's probably the furthest back I would go. And even then I would still try to get you to squeeze out some money for a new platform eventually. Uh, although RAM prices are keeping me from recommending that totally right now, a graphics card swap is literally just that. It's plug and play, uh, and it's not gonna cost as much as a completely new platform. This recommendation also assumes that you'd be jumping from DDR3 to 4 in the event of a platform upgrade, which would require, you know, RAM, and that's gonna cost you quite a bit right now. Look, if it wasn't so damn expensive, I'd choose the platform and Instead, but with RX 580s, 1060s, and 1070s working back into stock, I'd advise this upgrade first, especially if you're moving from anything earlier than NVIDIA's 500 or AMD 7000 series. You'll still likely see a solid frame rate jump as well. In fact, I would argue that in most cases, you'll see a higher frame rate jump by upgrading your graphics card than you will if you upgrade your CPU and RAM. Now this next tip goes out to those of you who insist on pairing 1000 watt power supplies with 300 watt computers. I know they look beautiful. I love the modularity. I love that they're super quiet, but in a budget build, this should not be a top priority. I'm sorry. Stop wasting money. I don't care what your 80 plus efficiency is or what overclock you're sporting and with your CPU and your graphics card, it's just not worth it. A 1000 watt PSU is overkill. In most cases, an 800 watt power supply is overkill, okay? If you want the future proofing upgrade path, whatever you guys call it, fine, okay? But you shouldn't be looking to future proof that many things in a budget build that kind of defeats the purpose. Instead, I invite newbies to check out my power supply wattage video for a good idea of what you should opt for. I recommend at least 80 plus, but going for anything above 80 plus gold really makes no sense in a budget build. Stick to a name brand manufacturer like Seasonic and you should be A-OK. -okay. The next thing I recommend, at least a quad core CPU and from a modern generation, something like Ryzen, don't go with FX4300. I'm sorry, that architecture ain't gonna cut it more on that right here. Also, I wouldn't go much further back than maybe Haswell unless you can get Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge for a super cheap price. We're talking sub 200 bucks for the CPU, RAM, and motherboard all included. Uh, most cases, an R5-1600 is going to be your best value chip, even though it is 200 or so bucks, uh, it's going to be worth it. I don't recommend you cheap out on your CPU, because if you do, changing the CPU not only is going to take a lot longer, but you might even have to swap your motherboard, swap your RAM. It's just not ideal, I would say, in a, in a future-proofing situation, just to buy a cheaper CPU now, only to 
plan to upgrade your CPU two years from now, because by then a newer CPU gen is going to be out and you're going to want that instead. Packing 6 cores and 12 threads, the R5 1600 is my sweet spot, I recommended it in a separate video, but the quad core variants are also very compelling. As for Intel, a hand-me-down i5 or i7, like I said, would do nicely even as far back as Ivy Bridge if you can find the platform for a decent price. DDR3 isn't too pricey either, it's remained rather untouched by this uh, bizarre market behavior. Sure, you're taking a step back, but there are some killer deals out there I invite you just to have a look, that's all I'm saying. Now, these are just a few tips in mind that should steer you clear of much of the price inflation taking place in the PC gaming industry at the moment. Feel free to critique and add as you please in the comments below. Everyone's got a preference. These are just the first few things in which I would compromise in this current market. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life, don't be shy. Click the dislike button. Be sure to click subscribe button if you haven't already for more content like this, and stay tuned for, uh, yeah, more content like this. That didn't go very well. This was Science Studio. This is Science Studio. Wow, this is just falling apart here. Thanks for learning with us.